Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a quartic equation with complex numbers. We have z plus 1 to the fourth power equals 1 minus i and we're going to be solving for z values. Now I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. I'm going to go ahead and expand the left hand side from the binomial theorem, we get z to the fourth plus 4z cubed plus 6z squared plus 4z plus 1. And that is equal to 1 minus i. Nice. 1 cancels out. And we, we can add i to both sides, which is our imaginary. z to the fourth plus 4z cubed plus 6z squared plus 4z plus i equals 0. So we got our quartic equation, everything is on the left hand side, and we're going to solve for z. How do you solve a quartic equation? You can try to factor it, you can try rational root theorem. Wait a minute, we're talking about complex numbers, so can there be some rational solutions? Maybe, who knows? Or you can use a formula. So we're going to go with the formula here, and there's a couple different ways to solve quartic equations. One of them kind of relies on factoring, one of them relies on writing this as a difference of two squares. You know, you add something to both sides to make it a perfect square, so on and so forth. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get rid of the cubic term by changing the variable. So, and that can be done uh, by replacing z with something like w minus 1. And you might be questioning, like, where does w come from? I'm going to use a different variable, so it's substitution. But why minus 1. That minus 1 comes from here. You look at the coefficient of z cubed, which is 4 in this case, and then you divide it by the degree, which gives you 1, and then you negate it, which gives you negative 1. That's why z equals w minus 1 is going to give you what you want. Now let's see what happens when we replace z with that. So we're going to get w minus 1 to the 4th power plus 4 times w1 to the 3rd power plus 6 times w1 squared plus 4 times w minus 1 plus i. Let's go ahead and simplify this. I could write this as w to the 4th minus w 4w cubed plus 6w squared. Just the binomial theorem with alternating signs. And then th this one is going to be w cubed, but I'm going to have a 4 here, so it's going to be like this. Uh, let me simplify that here, w cubed minus 3w squared plus 3w minus 1, and if you multiply that by 4, you're going to get 4w cubed, and then this is going to give you a minus 12w squared plus 12w minus 4. I'm just trying to line up the same powers. And this is going to give me w squared minus 2w plus 1 from the square. Multiply everything by 6, you get 6w squared minus 12w, and then plus 6. And finally, I get 4w minus 4, and at the end, I'm getting an i. So we can put the i here, because i is a constant, right? Now we're going to go ahead and add these up. It shouldn't be too hard, with the, because they're all lined up. These two are going to cancel out. 6w squared plus 6w squared is 12w squared, so this is going to cancel out. 4w cancels out, 12w cancels out. 1 plus 6 is 7, and 7 minus 8, that's going to give us a minus 1. Uh-oh, that didn't cancel out, right? <laughs> okay, so we're going to get something like this. w to the fourth, and then this is going to be minus 1 plus i. And what is that supposed to equal? Zero. Awesome. Isn't that nice? We got such a simple equation. Wait a minute, what happened? Pretty much everything canceled out. Why? Let me tell you why in a little bit, but let me go ahead and isolate w to the fourth first. We can write this as 1 minus i. If you look at the original problem, this is what it is. And remember, we did replace z with w minus 1, right? So if you go ahead and do this with the original problem, actually things are going to be much simpler. Hey, why didn't you tell us that before? Because I wanted you to, no, not, not really. But I wanted you to see what happens because this doesn't always happen. But notice that 
the negative one and the positive one cancels out, leaving us with w to the fourth power. So that's where we are here. w to the fourth equals 1 minus i. And guess what we're going to do? We're going to go ahead and take the fourth root of both sides, right? But a complex number has four fourth roots. So let's go ahead and write this number using um, Euler's formula. The modulus is going to be 2, right? Uh, square root of 1 plus 1. Actually, that's square root of 2. And then inside, we're going to have, uh, oh, modulus, yes, the argument. 1 minus i is going to appear in the fourth quadrant. Therefore, its modulus is just going to be negative pi over 4. Or you can write it as 7 pi over 4, right? So it's going to be i times 7 pi over 4. And then you can kind of go ahead and find the fourth roots from here. How do you find the fourth roots? You can basically just divide the angle by 4. So one of them is just going to be, let's just call that w1. It's going to be the fourth root of square root of 2, which is the eighth root of 2 actually, times e to the power i times 7 pi over 4 divided by 4. That's going to be 7 pi over 16. And then to find the other ones, you're basically going to split up 2 pi into 4 pieces. So the arguments are just going to be pi over 2 or 2 pi over 4 radians apart. And since we have them kind of in terms of 16s, you can also write, write this as 8 pi over 16 apart, which is going to be easier because they have the same denominator. So W2 is just going to be the eighth root of 2 times e to the power i times 7 pi plus 8 pi is going to be 15 pi over 16. And we're in the second quadrant, right? And then the next one is just going to be add another 8 pi over 16. Then you're going to get 23 pi over 16. And finally, after adding another 8 pi, you're going to be 31 pi over 16. Notice that 31 pi over 16 is still less than 2 pi because 32 pi over 16 is 2 pi. Makes sense? So we're in the fourth quadrant. Yay. So these are all the fourth roots of our number. But guess what? We're not looking for W. We're looking for what? Z. And you can basically just back substitute by adding negative 1 or subtracting 1 from the W values. And those are going to be the Z values. So in other words, Z is equal to negative 1 plus W. And I wanted to put the negative 1 first because these are in polar form. And then I'm just going to put the negative 1 first. So if you wanted to write one of these... Uh, in full form like the polar form without the, using e, you can kind of write it as follows. You could go with the eighth root of 2 times cosine 7 pi over 16 plus i times sine 7 pi over 16. But what is 7 pi over 16, right? Think about it. I mean, you could uh, find the value, but that would be very, very radical. I don't think you want to go that route, but it can be found. Okay, because we do know what uh, cosine of 7 pi over 4 is, right, don't we? It is the 315 degrees. And then we could just keep uh, cutting in half by using some formulas or drawing right triangles and so on and so forth. But that's pretty much going to be. And I told you that I was going to present two methods. Let me briefly talk about the second method. So the second method is kind of more direct because it doesn't require any, what's it called, uh, substitutions. Well, sort of. You can directly take the fourth root. That would be my second method. And if you did, z plus 1 would be the fourth root of 1 minus i. But I could probably write it as 1 minus i to the power 1 fourth, which kind of represents all fourth roots. But And then we're going to be adding negative 1. And basically, there's going to be four fourth roots. And each one is going to give us a different solution. Make sense? And... This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.